Now, some of you, ladies and gentlemen, may be aware that next Tuesday, the ESB, Electricity Supply Board, are celebrating the 50th anniversary of a momentous happening in the history of this country, because on the 5th of November, 1946, the first pole in the Rural Electrification Scheme was erected at Kilsalahan, out here in North County, Dublin. And this was followed the following January by the switching on of power in Old Town, also in North Dublin. Not many people know that. Kilsalahan for the pole, Old Town for the, for the power. And these two events kick-started a scheme, I suppose, which was change utterly the working and domestic lives of people all over this country. And it would be impossible, I suppose, to explain to young people today what it was like before everybody got the ESB and the electricity into the houses and into the factories and so on. We want to spend a few minutes m m reminiscing about those days, the, the, the days when it happened. And would you welcome, please, Alice Taylor and Michal Omura Hertha to our dear Show you, you see, to us, it's not all that long ago. Um, I mean, have a look at that. That was, that was a very favourite poster. And we had one of those. That's the toast. We had one of those in our house. I remember it very well. And you had to take the toast out and turn it round, you see, and put it back in in order to get it toasted. And that was a, that was a favourite. Did you have one of those, Alice? Did you yeah. get one of those? Yeah. Yeah. It was one of the first things actually that came into our house. A toaster? Yeah, because my mother was into toast. And, um, Your mother was into toast? <laughs> she was into toast in a big way. We were always toasting bread to the open fire. Yes. So when the electricity came, for some strange reason, after the kettle and the iron, the toaster was the first thing. Yes. And there was no pop up in it. No. So the yeah, advent no, of electricity in our house, yeah. 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 I mean, we burnt, we burnt toast wholesale in it. Yes. And, and, and it was, it was spring loaded, Alice. You see, it, right. it clicked up tight. Yeah. 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 Now you will remember this, and this was the this was the pre electric electric iron. What do you mean? You all remember this, do you? <laughs> I don't believe it. You see, you used to have to pull that yoke up there like like so, and you had to take out a yoke in there, and you had to heat that. Did you? You had to heat that yoke in there, did you, Alice? That. That's right. That went into the fire, you see, and it, yeah. and it got heated, you see, and that got roasting hot, terribly, terribly hot, and then that went in there, and the shutter came down, and you ironed like that. That was the iron. And then the electric iron came along, and I remember, it's amazing the way you, you, things come back. Do you remember the little thumb thing there, the little button on the thumb thing? And that was all the go. You got one of those too, Alice, did, did you? Yeah, yeah. And that must have been a godsend, that because that... was a gift. Because, gift. The, you know that, that first little fellow? Yes. I mean, he was... He was a lethal weapon. He could burn the hands off you. I'm sure. Because you when you took the the heater out of the fire, yes. you see you had to hold the, the iron in one hand yes. and you had to get the tongs and pick up the the, the yoke. The, the yoke and you had to balance and if you didn't get it right, yes. you, you got scarred. Scarred the hand yeah. off you, yes. But uh, that's a ni nice little heater. That's a little fan heater of the time there. Rather decorative, a sort of art deco kind of, uh, you know, a nice, nicely designed little thing. But I see nothing wrong whatsoever with this electric kettle. It's a lovely kettle, isn't it? It really is beautiful. And it's still working as well. And, and you got one of those, I presume, yeah. too. Yeah, that was the first. Uh, so what was it like before that then, Alice? Can you remember before you got the electric kettle and all of that? Yeah, well, I mean, we were, we were reared to the, the eye lamp and the candles. And there was just an eye lamp in the kitchen. Now, the one in the kitchen was, um, there was this uh, handle out of the wall, as you could call it, with a kind of a, a, an iron base and the lamp rested into it and um, it had a glass bowl now this was filled with oil every day and lit when it started to get dusk i mean there was no waste because the oil you got a gallon of oil for the week and um, when it was i mean cleaning the, jo the globe was a big operation i mean if you broke the globe that was a disaster with yes. no light and uh, it was cleaned with newspaper and paraffin oil yes. and uh, then the globe was put on and the light the lamp was lit very low for a while so the globe would warm up and i remember there was a custom of putting a hairpin i don't know how many will remember that over the top of the globe to stop it from cracking now i don't know how effective it was but it was done anyway and uh, that was the the kitchen lamp and then we had um well the posher lamp for the parlor the parlor lamp was brass and it stood on one leg and it had a lovely kind of a pale green bowl with pink roses and that had a shade I can remember the shade. It was fluted around the top, a bit like a ballerina doing a headstand, <laughs> and it just looked lovely. Yes. And that was only lit for uh, visitors yeah. and maybe Christmas and things like yeah. that. But the, 
the kitchen lamp was the thing. Yeah. And then for the bedrooms, all we had was a sconce and a candle. Yes. And we were given a sconce and a candle every night to go to bed. And I sometimes remember, you know, when we got to the bedroom, we did a lot of reading in bed, and we would pour a little waterfall of um, candle grease on the top of the bed, and then stand the candle into the, the grease, the candle grease, and read. And I mean, it was highly dangerous. So of course, half the house in the country wouldn't burn. They weren't, you know. But the Leaf. candle, yeah. and the candle grease spattered all over the. Mm bedroom floor up the stairs and every Saturday it was our job the children to go up with kind of blunt knives and scrape the candle grease off the floors <laughs> and you'd imagine that would make us careful the following yes. week not a bit of it we yeah. splattered it all over the place again <laughs> <laughs> like Hall, what, what you use paraffin as well before you got oh that yeah part. the paraffin yeah. was the big thing yeah and paraffin was rationed you know during the war so yeah. that's where the candles came in now one thing Alice didn't mention the little sacred heart lamp that that's had a wick right. as well yeah. Yeah. It was a very dainty little thing with a red uh, bowl on it and a very, very thin little wick. Now, that always had a little bit of oil. It didn't take much. Mm. But the lamp and the paraffin oil and the double wick, if it was a big lamp, right. and uh, they were always on the wall. When the ESB came, they went in the centre of the room. Yes. But for some reason, the lamps were always on the wall or in a car. Yeah. Mm. It must have been phenomenal to, to, to find houses lit for the first time. I mean, there must have been corners of houses that had never seen much light. It had never been seen. <laughs> never oh, been seen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So I was actually away when the electricity came. I think it came in the early 50s. Yeah. And I had been accustomed to the candles and the paraffin oil lamp. And then suddenly to come home to see this light in the middle of the room. Yeah. It was a dramatic change. You know? Yes. I remember my mother-in-law, Lord Rester, saying that, that, that a neighbour of hers got the electricity in Saggart and she asked her the next morning, how did it go, Biddy, or whatever her name was, and she said, oh, Dinah, she said, uh, it was too bright. I switched yeah. it off and I lit a candle. <laughs> yeah. she, couldn't, she couldn't take that amount of light. Yeah. Yeah. And then quite a lot of people were afraid of it at the beginning, you know, that uh, this danger or this fear of being electrocuted. Yes. And I knew one neighbour, he'd be last to bed every night, he'd be reading the paper or something. His last thing to do, his daughter Mary would have gone to bed and he'd shout up, Mary come down and put off this light. <laughs> and Mary had to come down to switch off the Why? light. Just the fear of touching it, it might be alive. <laughs> you know, this was an elderly man at the time yes. and he was actually afraid of what electricity might do to him. He loved the light and all that. Yes. But uh, I think that was fairly widespread, uh, I mean, fear. Yeah. People were, yeah. if you like, ultra cautious about it, but they still all welcomed it when it came first. Yes. I have a little video to show you, a little piece of video. We, this belongs to the ESB, and we haven't been able to source it or find out exactly where it was, but it's a parish priest in some small place, obviously, switching on the power for the first time. And it's, it's, it's hard to imagine now what a momentous occasion that would have been. Roll it there, Ray, please. Just have a look. Hello. I think I have kept you long enough. I'll uh, do the important point now and give you some light on the subject. I uh, hope that I haven't kept you too long. And <clears throat> by uh, simply putting my hand on the ticker here, I give electricity to the countryside. Now here I am doing it for your own. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely, isn't it? God knows where it was.